Hello, Luke here with catsandcarp.com, and I'm going to show you how to make an awesome do-it-yourself squirrel trap. Now, the squirrels have been eating my carp bait, they've been chewing holes in my garage, and I don't like the way they've been looking at my wife through our bedroom window. So we're going to build a trap. Get yourself some 1x10s or some 1x6s, and you're going to also need some long sticks, and it can be dowels or whatever, some half-inch hardware cloth, you're going to need a drill with a one inch bit and a couple smaller bits, some paracord or string. You're going to need measuring tape, right angle, some hammers and nails is the simple way to go. Or you can get some screws if you want to go a little bit stronger. Uh, some wood glue is nice to make that a little extra tough. Um, I like uh, to use the old handsaw. A buck knife, uh, some sort of pocket knife is good. And a pair of wire cutters for the hardware cloth. So what you're going to do is you're going to get out and you're going to start measuring some pieces. Now there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to do it the lazy non-carpenter way. So get out and measure all your pieces in one go and then chop them all up. Um, I'm not going to get really precise cuts. I'm not a carpenter, but this will get the job done just fine. So at any rate, this uh, handsaw works really good. It's actually, I think, faster than my power saw just because you don't have to muck around with all the batteries and stuff. But at any rate, you're going to want to chop up four 24-inch pieces, a 5-inch piece, and a 2-inch piece, and then a 7-inch piece. So you're going to have seven pieces of wood. Um, take the 5-inch piece, and you're just going to cut these little strips using a pocket knife and a hammer. You want to get them uh, just about a quarter-inch thick, uh, maybe a little bit less, but nice and consistent. Okay, So I usually do five of them and then pick out the, the four best best ones but uh, at any rate you're just looking for little strips of wood then I'm taking this uh, wooden stake and I'm cutting uh, the tip off it and then I'm going to start putting together the box so I'm going to drill some pilot holes for the screw and uh, I'm going to put some wood glue on the joint and I'm going to screw this thing down now I think I'm using something like an inch and a half long on a screw before you get the box too uh, much assembled, you've got to put the little door slats in. So take the 7 inch piece, which is going to be your door, and use it to measure the guides. It's going to let the door f slide up and down. And you want it to have a little bit of play. You don't want it to be tight. So use the door, then add about an eighth of an inch um, so that it's the space between the two guides is an eighth of an inch thicker than the door. And then you're going to go and do the exact same thing on the other panel that you're about to put on and put a little glue down screw that thing down once again you want to keep it straight you want to keep it in the middle of the plank and then you want to uh, uh, make sure there's a little bit of a play there okay and then once that's the guides of the door are in then you uh, put the both sides of the box on and then you go ahead and put on the roof now what you'll do is on the front end where the door slides down you need to leave a space so the door can slide down so that the, the front end is not flush okay um, and when you do that that makes the back end stick out a bit well unless you really cut the pieces really nice and exact which I don't there's it's not going to be flush on the back anyway so what I just do is I, I don't worry about it I just let the back look uneven and then I just take the saw and cut everything flush to make it look pretty so once you've done that, the back end is all nice and flush. You can uh, put the half inch hardware cloth on. This is going to be the back of the door. So this is the front here. You can see how there's a gap in the tops to allow the door to slide down. So the top piece is shorter than all the sides and bottom piece. Okay, so now cut out your piece of hardware cloth and you can either use some lathe screws or you can use a staple gun to attach this square of hardware cloth to the box. You want to do it pretty good because when a big squirrel sees you coming, they freak out and start ramming themselves against the, the wire mesh sometimes. So they, uh, they will uh, put some force on it. So you want to really latch that down because the last thing you want is a crazy squirrel getting loose on you. At any rate, um, so put down all the, the lathe screws and I think I'm using half inch um, number eight lathe screws here. Um, and I think these are the self-tapping ones, but I don't think that was necessary. So at any rate, once you got it, it should be nice and tight. And then what you do is you're going to make the post, the balance beam post. And, and basically, 
um, I'm taking that two inch piece of wood and drilling it to the bottom of that survey stake that I, uh, that I saw it on. And then uh, once you got the little T put together, you screw it to the top of the box. And it really doesn't matter too much where you put it. Put it more or less in the middle and kind of keep it in the center and try to keep it straight. And You know, you can just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be too precise. Um, then what you want to do is you want to drill a hole. And you want it about four inches back from the end and dead center. It's about a one inch hole. And then on the top of the door, uh, screw in a screw, but just leave it sticking out a little bit. And you're going to tie your string to that. Okay, so I tie a little bit of the uh, paracord to that. doesn't need to be fancy as long as it stays put. And then you're going to go and drill a hole into your little balance piece, which you can use a dowel or you can use a stick off the forest floor. Pretty much anything that's long and skinny will work. And you just want to tie um, the rope from the door to the balance beam. And the length of the rope is, is going to be tricky, so you can kind of uh, guess and test until you get it the right length. But you want it so when the balance beam is more or less level, the door is barely in the top of the guides. And then burn off the, the knot so that it won't come unraveled. Uh, drill another hole in it, and this is going to, uh, that's going to connect to the trigger. Now the trigger is just a piece of a stick I found on, on the ground. And uh, just want a long, you want a skinny piece of wood. You don't want it to be too beefy. Um, I like using natural sticks because then it's more like what the squirrels used to. And you carve a little notch in uh, it, and a notch, uh, you, a notch to tie the string in, and then a notch to uh, act as the actual trigger portion. That notch will catch on the inside of that one-inch hole, and will be what keeps the trigger from going up and keeps the door from lowering. So once you got your trigger carved up, you tie a piece of paracord to it and then, you know, burn off the knot and then you're going to want to go and attach the paracord to the balance uh, portion and kind of get it so everything's nice and level, the door's barely in the guides and the, the trigger catches on the inside of that one inch hole. That little notch catches right in there and then just kind of test it. And you want that trigger to be sensitive um, and not to be too comfortable all, uh, in where it, where it sits. Um, but at any rate, this, is, this little trap design is something I've done since uh, I was a little kid. I've probably made 10 or 12 of these things over my life. My grandpa showed me how to make one of these out of a, a cedar piece of fencing. And he um, uh, used to catch squirrels with this and showed me how to do it. Uh, even showed me a scar on his finger where a squirrel bit a chunk of his finger off when he was trying to get it out of the trap and put it in the gunny sack. So be careful, these squirrels are a little bit dangerous. But at any rate, um, it's a really fun thing to do with your kids. Um, it's it's just a really fun thing to do. And it's a great humane way to catch and try and get rid of squirrels. You know, kind of um, just if you don't want to kill them, you just want to move them. <laughs> this is not a bad way to do it. It works on cats and raccoons and pretty much anything. You just make a bigger or smaller trap. So to bait it, I use a little piece of bread with some peanut butter on it. And I stick a, a nice hearty chunk on the tip of the trigger. Maybe put some pieces right behind the trigger. And when I'm trying to pick a spot to put the trap, I just run around, find a squirrel up in a tree. And I set the trap right there. And oftentimes they'll come down just to investigate and see what I've left behind. And I put some... Uh, breadcrumbs on the threshold and breadcrumbs outside the trap just kind of a little trail of breadcrumbs leading right into the trap and usually it doesn't take very long for the squirrel to come down from the tree and check out my trap um, it, it works pretty well Oh, there's another squirrel on the walnut tree. That's what he's staring at. There's another squirrel. See, it's wiggling its tail at him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see it. I can see the shadow of it flipping on the wall. Yeah, he's, he's right there. He's wiggling his tail right behind the walnut tree. Oh. 
Oh, we got him! We got him! Oh, the baby Careful, off. careful, David. Don't go too close. The baby fell off. It fell off. And I'll get him. All right, Tom. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Careful. Come over here. Yeah. You want to let him go? Yeah. Okay, so what we do is we take this. Come in here. Come, come right here, Tom. Come right here. Okay. Now see, hold this pole right here and lift it up. <laughs> Good job, Tom. If you liked that video, check out some of our other great videos, including six best bank fishing hacks and how to build your own worm taser. If you like these videos, click subscribe to get new videos every week. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll be happy to respond. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click subscribe.